Bye. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So welcome back everybody. I think this is probably going to be a continuation of the sawmill shed build series. Um, what we need to do now is get a back wall on this shed. Of course we did the first two videos about putting the shed together and I mentioned at least on the last video, <clears throat> excuse me, I mentioned on the last video they were getting a good bit of blowing rain and that's kind of to be expected with a shed like this you've got a very high roof and no walls so that rain any kind of wind and a light rain is going to blow that rain into the shed and it's going to get whatever is up under the shed wet uh, despite the fact that it's all under cover so what we need to do is get a back wall on this shed and that's what we're going to do today as you can see behind me i've got a pretty decent collection of logs i managed to procure 14 free logs yesterday and while well, i say they were free it was quite it was quite a bit of hard work, but it's going to be worth it when we get into these logs. So the sawmill's got its work cut out for it, and what we need to do now is get a back wall on this thing so we can continue, uh, so we can keep the, sh the uh, mill and the tractor uh, a little bit drier than they are right now. So let's get started and see what we can get done. So guys, I wanted to pause really quick and show you all something. If you can see uh, the tops of these posts, they're actually notched out and the roof of the shed is attached to the, um, uh, to the post by that joint right there. It's a very, very strong joint and uh, it works really well. The problem was when we put this shed together, I didn't take into account the drop of the land and it turned out that the very final post right here, I was not able to do that joint because everything, everything was just too short. I had to cut this post off too short for it to be level. So that's just kind of sitting up there. It's attached by some screws and a couple of monstrous uh, log dogs, basically. So uh, that leads us some, gives us some problems with attaching these, these uh, purlins to the post. So this is my solution. I stuck a Samson strong tie, an L bracket to the uh, to my purlin right here, and this is going to be the one that goes on that particular post. So I think that's I think that'll work just fine. I think that'll hold just fine. Seems to be pretty strong.
So guys, I had uh, something very unexpected happen on a couple of my couple of my videos where I mentioned that I was going to line the back of the shed with this uh, with this nice cedar lumber. I had some people that got downright upset and angry. Uh, there was profanity and deleted comments in the whole nine yards, and uh, a lot of people were telling me that I needed to line the closets with this cedar log, with this cedar wood, or build a hope chest that it was a giant waste putting it on the back of the sawmill shed. Well, here's, here's kind of my take on that. If I were to build a hope chest or line the closets with it, you know, unless the hope chest was in a prominent area of the house, you know, I, how, how often would I really see it or enjoy it? Uh, if it's in a closet, it's gonna be behind clothes and behind a closed door. And I'll get to see a little bit of it every time I open the closet door. But besides that, I won't get to enjoy it. It'll keep moths out of the clothes, but that's about it. This way, every time I walk out into the yard, I'll be able to look at this back of this sawmill shed and I'll be able to enjoy it. And uh, while I'm sawing, I'll get to look up at this cedar and I'll get to remember uh, those great cedar logs that I sawed. And it'll be kind of an inspiration about what I can, what this sawmill lets me get out of these logs. Um, so that's kind of my take on that. Uh, and I guess if you're one of the ones uh, that was struggling with that, it's probably a good time to click off the video because we're about to line the whole back of the shed with this stuff. Come to help. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. You've been helpful. <laughs> Thank you. 
So guys, that's all I've got, and I'm gonna declare this a success. Um, I think the back wall turned out really nice, and I, if I had to guess, it's probably 70 to 75 degrees, maybe a little bit higher here, and the temperature inside of the shed is much, much, much cooler. We've hit the point of the day uh, where the sunshine comes right from the back of the shed and just blasts right in there and that uh, rear wall is making shade and it's it's really really nice uh, more importantly though we're going to keep uh, keep rain off of it when you know when we, when it starts raining that wind starts blowing uh, that's going to go a long way a really long way to keep my equipment in there dry um, I, I didn't really want i know that y'all noticed uh, there's a pretty big discrepancy between the length of the back boards on one part of the shed to another part of the shed i didn't really want to do that uh, but i just didn't have enough long enough boards uh, to make the length all the way down so i just kind of tried to put those on the top side where the ground gets a little bit higher um, it's pretty noticeable but uh, you know it's it's okay i don't think the equipment's going to complain about it complain about it too much um, also, if y'all know some kind of a way to attach these purlins uh, between the posts, those are round posts, of course, and I just didn't really know how to attach square ends of those purlins in between to those round posts. I, I assume I would have had to have notched them out somehow or another. Maybe there's some kind of a bracket for it. I'm not sure, but it would have been a lot stronger as far as, uh, you know, the back wall, the sway on the back wall. Uh, if I'd have been able to put those in there horizontal. Uh, as it is, it's, it's strong enough. I think it'll be totally fine, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not super worried about it. But if y'all know some other way, some way to attach those square ends to those round posts in between those posts, um, let me know. I'd love to know uh, if I have another project that I need to do this with. Uh, also, I'm sure I'll get some questions. I'm not planning to put battens between these boards, and the reason is I still would like some airflow to go through there and uh, those cracks that are in between those boards uh, will, will, will give me a little bit of airflow when it's, when it's stifling hot in the middle of, <laughs> in the, middle of the summertime. Um, if I had to use a word to describe this project, I would certainly call it rustic, especially that back wall. But you know, it's a sawmill shed. The sawmill's not complaining about it, and I'm, I'm actually very happy with it. I'm, I'm very happy the way that it turned out, and I, it smells amazing. I wish, to, I wish I could share the smell of this with y'all. Um, it's, it's really, really nice. But aside from that, that's all that I have got, and I really appreciate y'all watching this video, and I will see y'all next time. Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Watch mommy. Y'all say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Hey! No? How about this? All right, everybody, give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> yay! <laughs> yay! Say yay! All right, can you say bye-bye? Say bye-bye! Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye? You getting his hand? Is his hand in there? Because he tried to wave. He acted like he was going to. All right, say bye-bye. You ready? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.